What exactly happened to deshrouding? So deshrouding is, let's say, the physical process of removing the whole black portion over here, the bottom portion of the GPU where the fans are attached and then maybe or maybe not replace the whole thing with thicker fans. And people used to do this a lot. Most of the times you could achieve a lot better cooling performance or overall less noise by replacing these fans with regular 120mm fans. Usually the reason for that was the, the GPU fans were like underpowered as hell. A, they were a lot thinner than regular fans, they were smaller and, and overall just weaker. They may have been spinning a lot faster but you could achieve a lot more by replacing them with thicker fans. And in the past there was a lot of interest for deshrouding. People used to do it a lot and for some reason the trend just slowly started to fade. So this morning I beg the question, now in 2024 where we have cases that have excellent bottom intake like the Monte King 95 right next to me here, is GPU deshrouding even worth it in 2024? And for this experiment we will use my biggest and fattest RTX 4090, this Zotac Amp Extreme Aero which on its own is just a behemoth. So for today we will try to answer the question, is deshrouding still worth it in 2024 with the behemoth of cards that we have nowadays? But before I start breaking this thing, let's first do some benchmarks. We have some numbers. So my RTX 4090 here from Zotac with Fermark at 4K all in and having all of the settings at default, the card is running at 59 degrees C. And we have 25 degrees C ambient temperature. Oh my God, that is hot in here. Anyway, it is running at 59 degrees C. When I force the fans to spin at max, which is by the way, kind of loud, just listen. When I force that, the GPU cools down to 46 degrees C. So there is a large gap there. But what I also wanted to know is if deshrouding it or replacing the fans is worth it in terms of noise. So I said, okay, we are going to force the card to be running at 50 degrees, which translated to about 70% of the fan speed, which sounds like that. And having that noise resulted in exactly 50 degrees C on the cart with <laughs> just told 25 degrees C ambient temperature. Oh my god, that is an over here. Okay, so at this point, I guess it's time to take that poor sucker apart. So, A, if you're afraid of a warranty, don't do this. And if you wanted to repeat this at home, don't take this as a guide if you do not have the exact same GPU. Every GPU is going to be differently built. So it's not like one guide uh, fits them all and sometimes you need to remove everything of it. You, sometimes you even need to remove the heatsink first before you can like deshroud it. And I don't know actually how, how this is going to be, but you're going to very quickly see why I chose this GPU because I believe the whole shroud is kept in place using only six screws. I believe that is the case, but we will see that. But I don't know if you can see, but here we got a, a Phillips screw, here we got one, here we got one, and the same at the top. So six screws distributed in the top and bottom of the card. And I really hope that the whole thing just comes apart the moment where I remove all six of them. And of course this will like void the shit out of your warranty. But we are doing it for science. Please come apart, please. Oh my god, it comes apart! Six screws! Oh, I have the easiest GPU to dish road. Oh, I'm so happy right now. Okay, last point that we need to do is remove all of these cables here. So we got, I believe those two are for the fan speed and then we got this one here which is just like ARGB. So slowly to not break something. One, two, and this one going to be a little bit harder. Maybe I will need to do it from this angle here. Is there like some sort of clip keeping it? No there isn't, but what I can do, reposition the cable like that. To have a better angle. Maybe with this it's going to be easier. Yeah, the problem is I'm pulling on the on the wires and if I wanted to get re a good access to everything I would need to remove the whole top plate which I can't from the top because it's screwed in through the heat stick at some point. Okay, 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 let's, let's think. How will I do this? Yeah, I think pulling is like the only way I have if I don't want to rip the whole bottom part out. Or maybe if I use a flat head and then like slowly pull on the two sides. 
Yeah, this could work. And if I then have another one on the other side, I can maybe pull it out slowly. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, it's already out a bit. Oh, it made a click. Oh, I have it. Yeah, this, this here was the one I needed to pull out. Okay, that's a fat one. Whew. That was a lot easier than I thought. Uh, GPU deshrouded. This is what the top of the heatsink looks like. And in the past, people would now slap whatever fan they got onto here. But I have the question nowadays with the bottom intake fans, do we really need any fans on there? Or uh, will the cooling performance of the case be enough to force the GPU into a state where I feel comfortable? So I will now repeat the three tests. Oh, the three tests. I, I can't force the fans anymore, but I can see how it performs out of the box with no fans. And then I will see if I can manipulate the bottom fans to a point where the GPU will stay at 50 degrees. So uh, yeah, let's try it out. And if you're asking yourself if the GPU has become a lot uh, lighter, the answer is no. This is plastic and weighs like nothing. It will still sag a lot. But it's a lot thinner now. It's now it's really like a three slot GPU. A de-shrouded GPU that is now only a three slot GPU. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, the fan ramping of the GPU is gone when I start the system. That's nice. That's something we want. Oh. No, I tried forcing the bottom fans into 100% and then just pushing as much air as possible into this enormous heatsink. No way. The GPU goes beyond 84 degrees and their thermal throttle will kick in. The core clock of the GPU will just drop and drop and drop. And originally, uh, where have my numbers? Originally, with the, the original fans here, the whole, the whole shroud on top, we were sitting at uh, 2715 megahertz. And without the fans, no matter if I tried uh, pushing them at full speed, auto, so just like case, motherboard temperature speed, um, or nothing, essentially, no matter what I did, it started to drop after a few minutes to to two six two five and and just down and I just just stop and ignoring that format will blast you with messages that uh, hey your fan is stuck please like do something about it or I will die so no unfortunately this doesn't work I believe maybe it may work if you have like an ITX case a very small one where the, the GPU is sitting like at the bottom and touching the bottom fans I believe that would would be more like replacing the original shroud with fancy fans, which is exactly what we will do now. For a little endeavor over here, I got a brand new box of Arctic P12 Maxis in black with the fluid dynamic bearing. You can see here revision two. This is probably some, some update has been done and we will try to find that out in a dedicated review. But for now, let's take two of those and somehow make them fit onto that thing. It's two, or will we maybe, Oh my god, this is like exactly for the 120mm home factor. But are we maybe able to slap a third one? Yeah, no, the third will just overhang like a lot. Or should we add a third and let it overhang a bit? Let's do three, but we need to figure out a way how to uh, mount them here. And to be honest, I don't have the force and time in me to somehow create something out of plastic to then mount the fans to that and, and that's just... I, I don't have the time for that today, so we will zip tie the hell out of these here. Okay, my plan is to zip tie three fans together and then zip tie the whole thing onto the GPU. I think that's the best cause of action, or in the very least, I hope so. And the same thing on the other side. Tick. Tick, tick, and tick. Okay, a block of Arctic P12 Maxis. This is so overpowered. Okay, now we somehow need to fiddle this onto the cord. And actually we can, I think, utilize the fact that we got this shroud here. So does it work if I do something like that? Then get that little zip tie through the heat sink. Or can I... Is there enough space to like... Uh, yeah, this will actually work. However... Oh, the zip ties are like slightly too small for that, but I can't do it on the outer border because those fan holes will protrude out. So I'm going to use... Uh, getting it through is like really hard. Oh yeah, let's do it the other way. Yeah, here we will place one and here we will place a second one, which will be around here. 
and then I can fiddle this one through here and this one through here. Wow, this is like a lot easier than I thought. And now I just need to repeat the same thing on this side. Uh, give me another thin one. One. And here we are going to do the second one. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't this look freaking awesome? This is what a a GPU worthy of being called a 4090 should look like. Oh my god, this is just insane. Oh, this is going to be so, so cold and so quiet. Ah, let's try it out. actual hell. So to make one thing very clear from the beginning, deshrouding and replacing the fans of a 4090 of this size, or let's say the Zotac 4090, the uh, Iro Amp Extreme one, is not worth it. I did all of the tests with this and let's start at the auto test where the GPU stayed at 51 degrees C and had the core clock running at 2715, so exactly the same as the default, the max core speed. However, the temperature dropped by like 8 degrees. So in an auto setting, that was great. The problem is, however, these fans here, those are spinning at like 20-25% and you can perceive them, let's say, if they are spinning at that speed. The thing is, however, if I force the GPU down to 50 degrees, so just one degree down, I will have to force the fans to spin at 40%, where then they are definitely hearable. Just listen. And now let's compare that to the original one. So is that difference worth it to reach that 50 degrees? Yeah, that's kind of for you to decide. However, what I was most interested in is what is if I let those insane P12 Max spin at max speed, which is like what, 3200? 3300 RPM. So th those here are monsters. And while doing so, something very weird happened. The GPU was hotter. It was sitting at 48 degrees C. So two degrees hotter than if I let those motherfuckers here on 100%. Why is that? Probably because the core was running a bit quicker. You know how it is with GPUs nowadays. They will, uh, as long as you don't do it manually, they will like adjust the core speed and, and, and whatnot uh, according to their cooling potential, let's say. Just how m most modern CPUs do. And that resulted in a 15 megahertz higher clock, which then resulted in a two degrees C hotter temperature, but at the cost of noise. Of course you can do this now manually. I, I'm pretty sure that with this cooling power, you can overclock the card as hell. But if you are uh, running at a default, if you're just trying to achieve a, a colder or a quieter system, yeah, I'm sorry, but this is not worth it. So yeah, although I was able to achieve some sort of gain, it did come at the cost of two degrees, which is like really weird. And, and yeah, okay, the room is now a degree harder, so it's more like one degree, but uh, no, overall, this was not worth it. Yeah, it the, the difference from this to this is not the same as it was like five, six, seven years ago. Oh my God, the, these things are like highly optimized, given what I just did here. So there you have it. Deshrouding a GPU in 2024? No. Or at least, I mean, you will always find the GPU that just sucks, but the cooler is just bad. You have like one fan and then that the thing will just summer throttle all the time. But if you have like a high-end card like my Zotec here, it's just not worth it. Don't, don't do it. Just don't. Oh god, this was, this was not worth it. But hey, at least the card looks like really cool. I mean, yeah, but that thing looks awesome. But Okay, I hope you enjoyed this today, and I'm sorry to uh, Zotac for what I did to the card. Now I somehow need to put this back onto here, which I won't film because I will swear a lot and then I will get demonetized. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.